It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. You are tuned into your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Express right here on S3. It's a wonderful Tuesday morning. And listen, listen to the story. It is, it is mad indeed. Now, this morning, we are joined by entrepreneur, humanitarian, and adventurer Jean Craven, founder of Mad Swimmer, as he and some fellow South Africans attempt a daring quest to conquer the highest swim in the Himalayas. Now, is he here this morning to tell us all about this extraordinary expedition who raises awareness for climate change and also supports children's charities with a touch of a new world record on the horizon. John, it is insane, my friend. It's uh, welcome, well, wonderful to have you. Good morning, thank you. First and foremost, um, yes, you're going with a diverse group of people, uh, very high altitudes. How, how do you even begin to prep? Because some, you know, some of these people, they aren't you know, uh, mm. professional athletes or, or, or climbers or ice swimmers. How do you go about this? Yeah, well, first you mentioned a diverse group of people. I mean, this is probably one of our trips with the highest contingency of, of ladies. Um, so that's going to be interesting and hopefully quite helpful, give us some new insights. But uh, yeah, prepping for this trip, it's, you know, the, my doctor spoke to her yesterday, Chiara Sijia from Cape Town, and she was like just trying to do research blogs and stuff to get into. And I said, listen, you should actually blog this trip. You know, <laughs> there's not a lot of intel available on high altitude swimming, you know, um, out there. But uh, the prepping, yeah, general fitness, you know, be out there um, hiking and um, climbing, you know, it doesn't really, altitude affects people differently. You can be a couch potato watching uh, Netflix or espresso the whole day um, and not getting out there. And, and you might actually be fine with altitude and visibly like a, a, a fit triathlete and it might hit you quite hard. But general fitness um, out there, and most of the prep was actually in the mind, you know, this last week's been a lot of thinking about it, the whole team, you know, you can hear this uh, bit of quietness on the WhatsApp group. So people mm. are starting to prep mentally. And that's, I guess that's the big, biggest prep, you know, just to really prepare yourself mentally and, and, and make, aware, make yourself aware that, you know, things aren't going to work out as expected. And, you know, just to be acting calm and yeah. slow and thinking it through. Look, I know that you are going with a, you know, a team of professionals as mm. well to make sure that, you know, everyone is monitored throughout every step of the journey, mm. which is which is very important. But as far as I understand, I mean, the plan is, yes, to find a body of, uh, no, you haven't identified a specific body of water. And also mm. you're not taking a normal route. You guys mm. are literally tracking and finding your way mm. up. Yes, yeah, so originally um, there's the last highest body of water known was is uh, in the Andes Mountains at 6,400. So yes, we are looking for the unknown. Uh, we originally planned to do Everest and we were advised by the Nepalese authority, listen, as far as I know, Nepal hasn't got, uh, or Everest hasn't got water higher than Camp 2, um, and we, which is 6,450, 6,500, which we're targeting. And this uh, Puta Hinchuli is a mountain about 300 k's down the valley. It's got a lot of snow, fairly rounded. Um, yeah, the, so the probability of getting water here is fairly okay. Um, we've been working a lot with a village uh, just under 4,000 meters, just below the, you know, they've called it the death zone where you can survive. Um, they've been giving us a lot of intel, but it's going to be a, a search and find mission too. Mm -hmm. But you know, we've, um, we'll, we'll, we're sure we'll get there. We've got a good guide, Sean Disney, South Africa now living in the UK, he summited Everest twice. Um, he's got a team of 13 Sherpas that will be helping us. They're all from the region. They know the mountain very well. Um, and then when push comes to shove, we've got access to another 10, 20 bodies down in the valley that can come and help. But it's going to be exciting, to say the least. <laughs> exciting, to say the least, for sure. When are you guys off, officially? So we're actually on Friday. So we've got um, teams flying from a group from Cape Town, Joburg, um, London. And we also got one international swimmer. She's from Zurich. She's an ice swimmer. And then we're all uh, flying via Doha to Kathmandu, spending two days there, you know, kitting up. And then it's two hops to the base of, uh, of Mount Puta. Uh, this is a 7,200 meter peak and uh, it's going to be trekking, yeah, three mm. weeks of trekking, climbing every day, six to five to six hours. Yeah, look, um, <laughs> you got to pull up your socks for this one, that's for sure. Look, I know you're going to be battling freezing temperatures, altitude, like mm. you've mentioned, but all of this for a bigger cause. Yeah. And I want to talk about climate change. Mm. We, we, you know, climate change has been on our radar for, for you know, the longest time now. What's the mission here in terms of creating awareness yeah. around climate change? How will this play into it? Yeah. So, yeah, call, call it, you know, I'm, I'm more on the changing climate narrative. Um, we definitely uh, are experiencing it. You know, there's a debate how much um, influence mankind's had uh, has on it. I think, you know, 
by going green is not a bad thing and it's a good thing overall. But I think, you know, by us going and looking for water, perhaps where there shouldn't be water, mm. you know, just focuses the spotlight on, you know, these glaciers are melting. How can we as mankind, you know, make the planet a better place? Be aware of this, um, you know, in, in your day-to-day -day, um, activities. So yes, it'll definitely, I mean, there shouldn't be water at, at these levels. Uh, we do hope just for our swim and, and then it <laughs> yeah. freezes up after we've left. But I think it's, it's a big focus uh, around that. Um, we'll be, you know, we've got a climatologist uh, here in Cape Town that's also been giving a lot of input on the trip. And yes, as you said, it's a very topical issue and hopefully the swim can also, you know, put mm. more f mm. spotlight on that just to create awareness. I think that's a good yeah. thing. And if, the more and more we talk about it, you know, the more and more, you know, good constructive solutions will come out. Yeah. And look, and on the other leg of this expedition is also your support toward children's charities, mm -hmm. specifically in Cape Town and Bloemfontein. Mm -hmm. um, how, will, how will that play into raising awareness yeah. for these charities? And who are these charities? Are there num is it numerous charities? Yeah, so we've got, a, we've got a panel of about 30 charities globally we've helped over the last 15 years since we've been swimming these international swims. A majority of them in South Africa, most of our swimmers are from here, you know, but we have a, we've had about 450 swimmers globally join about 45 swims internationally and local. Uh, the charities, yeah, we identified this year as the Children's Red Cross Hospital here in Cape Town. I mean, they do fantastic mm. work, you know, and it's, it's really, we've seen them and supported them over the years. And then there's also a cancer oncology unit uh, for kids in, in Bloemfontein that have approached us and, you know, so we've identified them. Um, as, as, as two uh, local charities. And then we've got a Nepalese charity as well. There's, uh, we've, we've actually um, got raised a lot of money for some kit locally. And we've been, we're also building a, a Sherpa shelter, you know, helping our guys, you know, also uh, face uh, the cold in the Himalayas. Mm. But it's, you know, the, the charity, it's a great thing of being able to pay it forward. You know, yes, it's a privilege for us. I mean, it is quite pricey flying out to the Himalayas. It's a, you know, it's a real privilege for us being able to do this, but more so, you know, paying it forward to these charities and not just giving money, but giving your time and going to these guys and doing a check hand over and seeing these kids look up to you and say, wow, you know, this is yeah. superhero. You know, and if this guy can do it, maybe there's something great I can also do one day. So it's also creating that inspirational story with the kids. Absolutely. Look, we want to follow your journey. We want to see how do we do that? And, and, and what, do we, what can we expect to see? I mean, how, how, how cold is it up there? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, so the, so the climb is really the big thing and it's a mental thing, you know, yeah. above, actually, Vanessa, you mentioned on our trip, Vanessa yeah. Marie, she was saying she's going to take a bottle of Obi's worth and she's got this <laughs> wine sponsor. I said, yeah, cool, but wait till you get above 4,000 meters. Trust me, you know, a, a glass of wine is the last thing you want to touch. It, it, really, mm. it really starts focusing your body very much just on survival. And so from 4,000 meters to 6,500, we're going to be spending a good 10, 12 days in that zone. And it's, uh, it's, it's brutally cold. I mean, the wind, if the wind picks up, it can go, go down to minus 40. But call it on an ambient, yeah, it's going to be close to zero most of the times. Um, and it's, it's trying to sleep at night. The swim, yes, it's going to be mm. probably one to two degrees Celsius. But the swim, I was always telling probably people. probably warmer than the outside. It, it, yeah. it is warmer and it's a cherry on top. You know, wow, we made it. <laughs> and you actually don't even feel the cold. It's going to be a five to ten minute swim. So that's, yeah. but it's, it's harsh temperatures. And it's, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a growth opportunity. And I think that's why a lot of the team are coming with. You know, it's yeah. really a growth opportunity. Absolutely. You know, yeah, you say that the swim is the cherry on top, but as they're getting out again <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Listen, Jean, to you and your entire team, all of the best. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna keep a keen eye on you guys, and I would love to have you back afterwards. Yeah, no, you should have that world record. You should follow. We're gonna be posting like 45 to 50 second clips every day on social media. So go and look for us. So we're on all the platforms. Oh, it's gonna be amazing, Jean. Thank you very much. Again, we wish you all of the best. Follow their journey, and let's bring home a world record.